What's good on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you either who may be new to the game or just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there if you want a few recommendations on what players you could sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode I'll offer you to sign for guys time to return to Buenos Aires yes I did River Plate not too long ago and now we're going to do their arch rivals Boca Juniors that's right Boca Juniors of La Bombonera in Buenos Aires I'm surprised to find out La Bombonera is is not in um the game anymore I'm almost certain it was in the game a couple of years ago and it's not anymore. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that was the case. But now it's not in the game. Maybe it never was. Maybe I just made it up. I don't know. I thought it was in the game, but obviously it's not at the moment. So fingers crossed EA will add it soon because it really is an iconic, iconic old ground. Um, so Boca Juniors, they are a four-star team, of course, playing in the Argentine Premier Division. Uh, you'll see a start of a budget of around £14.5 million. Their objective in the first season is to win the league title. And of course, the Copa Libertadores objective is to reach the final. Uh, you won't see the Copa Libertadores objective in your manager objective screen until midway through the season when it officially sort of gets drawn, if you will. But their objective is to reach the final. Um, don't be worried like I was when I first began um, the career mode here. If you have enabled a Copa Libertadores, it won't show up initially, but it will midway through the season as a campaign, or I should say a competition, that is spread over two in-game seasons. It starts at the end of season one and it carries over to the start of season two. Now, Boca Juniors, uh, obviously under charge of of club legend Sebastian Bataglia. Uh, he, of course, came through the Boca Juniors Academy, had a brief stint in Spain for a year, but spent otherwise his entire career uh, playing for Boca, is now their head coach, so in charge of a club legend. See that quite often nowadays, don't we? But um, even so, it's it's an all right team. You know, four star in Argentina means it is going to be one of the top teams in the league. Um, they are one of the strongest. Your objective, again, is to win the league title. But what you'll notice with Boca is that it's a really old team. Now, there are a couple of decent youngsters, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, this is an aging squad that needs to get younger. Now, there are only two players I give contracts to. That's the young right back with AD potential and also Eduardo Salvio as well. Been around the block, Eduardo Salvio, but whilst he is 30 years old, 78 rated makes him one of the highest rated players in the team and he's good enough to be a starter in this Argentine league and definitely banging the goals and get the assists as well in the first season. He won't decline for at least a year or two, so... Personally, I would give Salvio a new deal. But as for players to sell, well, you would have seen it. Loads of players put on the transfer list because this Boca Juniors team is old. Again, there are a couple of decent young talents here, but for the most part, there are a lot of players in their 30s and a lot of players that are quite frankly, going to decline very quickly as they have very little to offer going forward. With me, with Boca Juniors, the area to strengthen and improve upon is definitely the back line. Now, you've got Rossi between the sticks. He's a great youngish goalkeeper at 78 overall with, I believe, 83 potential. He'll be your starting number one for all the years you're at La Bombonera, but the back four in particular, it's got to get younger, man. We sold Carlos Ambrano to Venevia. He is a 31-year-old Peruvian centre-back and West Bromwich Albion legend for those who watched my career mode all those years ago is Keridos. I went to Manuel Pellegrini's Real Betis for £8 million. Again, he's got a really good starting overall at 78 overall, but he's he's in his 30s now. It's time to look towards the future. And also you've got a backup goalkeeper, 72 overall, 34 years old, Garcia. I'd look to sell him as well and bring in a younger backup goalkeeper to replace him as the understudy for Rossi. Um, in terms of new signings, though, once again, I mentioned earlier, you know, you've got to make this side younger because quite frankly it is just too old and the back line is definitely where you want to improve upon for me I definitely would replace both centre halves you know it's Kerido who we sold to Real Betis and also Marcos Rojo you know the former Manchester United defender I would still sell him as well even though he was only just uh, signed for Boca Juniors what you'll notice with Boca is that a lot of their players have only just come in and that means you won't be able to sell them in the first transfer window but you can swap them out that was the case of Bernadetto our striker up top 76 
Rater, we swapped into Villarreal to soften the transfer fee that we paid for Juan Foyth. And to me, he is my number one target for a Boca Juniors career mode. And I'll tell you why. Very versatile. He starts off as a right back and he can definitely replace Advin Kula as a right back in your back four. But to me... I think this guy will be better playing as a centre-half. He spent time playing both centre-back and right-back for Villarreal and also Spurs as well. And to me, I think personally, he'd be better as a natural centre-back. He's tall. He's got great base offensive stats. I think to me, the best thing to do is bring in Juan Foyth. If you want to have him as a right-back, that's fine. But I, I personally would convert him to centre-back. It won't take you too long to add, uh, to add that position change and put him in your heart of your defence. Um, we also signed a replacement as well uh, for Benedetto. You know, he's 76 overall, but again, in his 30s. I would look for a younger striker. Boca have actually got four decent strikers here, but... I would still look to bring someone in who is much younger and has great potential as well. The player I look to sign is Berta Rame. One of the reasons I really like this guy is because he starts off 75 overall, which is more than good enough to bang the goals in in the Argentine league. And he's got great all-round base physical stats, very good versatile technical stats. And a player, if you want, with a good crossing stat and passing stat and vision stat, could play on the flank or as an inside forward. But I personally would keep him up top as your out-and-out -out striker. 75 overall on... On only one rating lower than Benedetto, but 10 years younger, and he's got 82 potential as well. So really good young striker to bring in for now and for the future too. As uh, so we saw the backup goalkeeper, Garcia, and as you'll see, we did decide to replace him with this guy, Joaquin uh, Blasquez. He is a few ratings lower than Garcia, but once again, what you got to remember is that Rossi is your number one, and he'll play every single game for you. So you don't really need a good backup goalkeeper. In FIFA career mode, one of the very simple tips to give is this. Goalkeepers never get injured or suspended, and they'll never get tired either. You can play them game after game after game, and they won't complain one bit. So you don't really need a good backup goalkeeper unless you're playing for realism. So, yeah, I, I personally would just bring in a cheaper goalkeeper. And, um, yeah, we got this guy for a straight swap deal, Briasco, who's a Armenian striker in his mid-20s. He wouldn't have much future in this team for the long term, so we ended up swapping him. Straight swap deal is not a single transfer fee paid. Also, reduced the wage bill as well because Blaskis' salary was lower. And this guy, despite the fact he's 65 overall, doesn't sound great. Yes, he's a whole 13 ratings lower than Rossi and only five years younger. But don't forget, in FIFA career mode, goalkeepers don't get injured, suspended or tired. You don't need a good backup goalkeeper, really. He's just there for the future, reduces the wage bill. And he's also got 79 potential as well. So there's no reason why he couldn't give some competition for Rossi in the future when he's peaking. Um, again, with centre-halves, with Boca Juniors, you got to get younger and you've got to build towards the future despite the fact Ross uh, Rojo sorry and is are a decent starting center backs in the Argentine league at 78 and 77 over respectively they're both in their 30s you got to get younger and I really do recommend this guy as the replacement for Marcos Rojo to partner Juan Foyf in the back line it is far uh, sorry Garthez um for Kundu Garthez. Um, I, I really like this guy. Now, he's only 21 years old and 73 rated. And what you'll notice is his deal's not coming at the end of the year. So you can get him on a really, really cheap deal. We swapped out one of our new centre-halves who isn't the best to. We can get better than and younger as well to soften the transfer fee. And this guy, 73 overall. That's only four ratings lower than Marcos Rojo. And he's a whole decade younger as well. And because of his stats too, he's the sort of player that can grow really quickly if he's on the right development plan. If you train him is reasonably low pace you can get this guy very quickly up to around 76 overall and in one season he'll be as good as Marcos, uh, Marcos Rojo so he won't really be a downgrade for you and he's still going to be 10 years younger so yeah definitely recommend that um, and again I would recommend as we continue to totally change our backline new right back obviously you can play Juan Foyf as a fullback if you want but again I wouldn't recommend it personally um, I would recommend a new right back and I'd recommend bringing back a Boca Juniors Academy graduate Nah. Well, Molina, who has moved on to Udinese in the Serie A, he's 23 years old, but already 76 overall, and he's got 82 potential as well. I'd bring him back to La Bombonera. Uh, we spent 7.5 million plus a 15% sell-on clause and Marcos Rojo, sorry, 7 mil plus a 15% sell-on clause and gave them Marcos Rojo as well. With Rojo at 31, he's going to decrease pretty much right from the get-go. I would look to get him out of the club as soon as possible. You won't be able to sell him because he's a new signing, but you can swap him out. That's off 
off in a transfer fee for Molina and he gave a 7 mil plus an aging Marcos Rojo. That's a really good signing. 76 overall means he's good enough to replace Advin Kula as you're starting right back in this team right from the very get-go. And again, at just 23 years old, he's eight years younger and he's got some really good stats when going forward here. Very decent stats indeed with a high, high work rate, which you know I love as well. So yeah, definitely bring this guy in. I think he'd be a great long-term successor for Advin Kula. Eight years younger younger and already a rating higher with 82 potential as well. Um, so following that, as you'll see, we also sold our left back, Frank Fabra. Uh, once again, I would recommend basically an entire new back line for Boca Juniors. Now, this guy, to be fair, I didn't have him on a transfer list, but we got a decent deal range of Lille of £7.5 million. He's 76 overall. If you want, you can keep him. If you want, you can sell him. It's totally up to you whether you want to do a total rebuild of the back four or keep one or two players like Rojo or like Fabra. In the end, we sold him uh, to the league inside for seven and a half million pounds and at 76 overall again 30 years old he probably won't decline in the first season but he's not going to get any better I personally would do a hard rebuild of Boca Juniors. It's such an old team, and I'd just make it a much, much younger one. The player I'd replace him with is Francisco Ortega uh, of Velez. Uh, this is a young left-back, 22 years old, 73 overall. Uh, we signed him uh, plus Advin Kula for, I think it was £3 million, uh, plus a big sell-on clause as well. Doesn't seem like the best of deals, but for me with Advin Kula, I, I wouldn't keep him here because he's 31 years old and he's going to decline in the first season. As you've got Molina and a young right back with 80 potential as well, Advin Kula would probably be your first, uh, your third choice, sorry. So I personally would swap him if I can't sell him. That softened the transfer fee for Ortega. And as you'll see, this guy will be our new starting left back to replace Fabra. Yes, you'll look at him and say he's three ratings lower than Fabra, but he's got 80 potential and he's eight years younger as well solid player as well and to me i put him on a defensive wide back development plan asap because going forward he's really good not so much at the back so get his defensive work credit from medium to high improve those relatively low defensive stats and he'll be a solid replacement for fabra in the first season probably grow to be just as good so once we change juan foy's position i love it when this happens you see an overall increase he went up two ratings to 79 overall once again you know if you want to play him right back you can he's got good enough stats to do that his passing's okay his crossing's okay his ball control is okay but he's not the quickest and defensively at six foot two with really really good base defensive stats he would be much better suited to center half in my opinion so yeah we changed him to cb he would partner garfez as our new starting center half with a totally new back four in now and after that after that signing there we still had a little bit more money to bring in a couple of young argentine talents uh we signed calcadera from newell's old boys in exchange for Rolon, a holding midfielder with basically no potential whatsoever but this guy's 20 years old 64 rated we've basically sold every single defender here with Boca Juniors he's on a very very low wage we got him for a straight swap deal so didn't pay a transfer fee and this guy's got 78 potential with dynamic potential could push 80 as well 20 years old 64 overall yeah in the first season he's just going to be there basically as emergency cover as a fourth choice you've got Avia out of the academy he's a really good young talent you're not going to use this guy much in the first couple of seasons but good emergency cover sort of player with good potential as well and one of the final signs I tried to pick up was this guy right here uh, Blaud uh, who is a young playmaker his contract's not coming at the end of the year so you can get him for a decent deal 20 years old 71 overall in the year we exchanged Diego Gonzalez who is 33 I believe plus a small transfer fee um, as well as 1.6 million pounds this guy 71 overall means he's good enough to sit on the bench for you in the first season and he's got 80 potential as well so yeah definitely Definitely someone I'd recommend. Obviously, Boca in their team. They play a 4 1 4 1. So, as a natural playmaker, it'll be hard to get him much game time in his preferred role, but he can operate a little bit deeper and also on the wing as well. For 1.6 mil plus an aging Gonzalez at 33 years old. Once again, we're looking to build for the future with Boca Juniors. And this guy definitely meets that criteria. High medium work rate. He's quick. Great dribbler of the ball with three star, three star. And again, certainly a player that's one to watch for the future. Just 20 years old with 80 potential as well. And the final signing I picked up as well, uh, 
was this guy. It is uh, Santiago Heze, another player whose deal is up currently end of the year. So it's very good value for money deals with Boca Juniors. Once again, not much money here at La Bombonera, so you've got to stretch your pennies and spend wisely. This guy you can get for under the valuation at 1.7 mil. He's only 66 rated, so once again, in the first couple of seasons, you won't really use him. You won't really see him, but... He does have 80 potential as well. So again, it's all about building for the future at Alon Bombonera. You can get him for under the valuation. We spent 1.35 mil to get him from Huracan. And as you'll see, very low starting weekly wage as well. And the sort of player who'll just crow quietly in the background. You won't see much of him in the first year or two, but he'll turn into a really good squad player in the future at La Bombonera. So... What a busy window for Boca Juniors, man. Absolutely mad how much business we did. But again, the key with Boca Juniors is very simple. Replace the old players, bring in the young players. It's a really, really aging side. There are so many players in their 30s and there are so many players who, quite frankly, going forward won't offer you much if you're doing an RTG and a long-term project. You'll see the players we sold here, Fabra, 30, Garfia, 34, Iscadeos, 32, Zambrano, also 32 as well. All the players we sold naturally were in their 30s. Then we swapped out the likes of Gonzalez as well. But the young Argentine talent we brought in, absolutely fantastic. Berta around May, 82, Foyf, 82, Molina, 82, all for potential those guys that can go right into the first team as your new back four then you've got Ortega with 80 potential also in the back four as well it's all about improving that back line as we did and making it much better for the future if not for now and making this side much much younger as well we certainly did that so as per usual we'd simulate the end of the season see how Boca Juniors will get on the first season Arsenal in the lead title tough objective with a rebuild project here at La Bombonera so we simulate the end of the season and as you can see well, as you'll see, the Copa Libertadores did come at the end of the season where we won all six of our games, as you'll see confirmation of in just a moment's time. But as for the league, we were asked to win the league title. Tough ask in the first season when you're doing a bit of a rebuild here, and we did indeed fall short. Our rivals, River Plate, were champions, 11 points clear of us in the end. We finished in third place. So qualify for the Copa Libertadores. That's pleasing to see, but um, yeah, a bit off the pace in the race for the title. We won 15 games out of 25, to be fair, but unfortunately, again... Just didn't have the quality in the first season. But again, with Boca Juniors, it's a it's a bit of a rebuild. So to, to win a league title in season one would be quite a tough ask when you know there are a couple of teams that are stronger than you uh, in terms of rating overall to begin with. So we failed our domestic objective there. But as for the continental objective, well, like I said earlier, the Copa Libertadores comes midway or towards the end of the season, I should say. The objective was to reach the final of this competition. It spread over two in-game seasons, of course. We made it for our group. We topped it was six wins out of six then we got through the last 16 as i was assimilating here i was thinking hmm can we go all the way like the board asked? We are Corinthians in the quarterfinal simulated through here against the brazilian side from rio de janeiro we made it through that as well and then it was getting real i was thinking can we possibly go all the way now boca have actually won the copa libertadores the second most amount of times i think they've got six Copa Libertadores, correct me if I'm wrong, South American football fans. I think Independiente are the only side that have got more. And after beating River Plate, our rivals in the semi, there it is. We'd hit our objective and we had Flamengo, another Rio de Janeiro side, in the Copa Libertadores final. Could we win the grand prize? Oh man, how heartbreaking is that? No, we lost on penalties to the Rio de Janeiro Brazilian side and came up short of this silverware. How gutting is that? We went all the way to the final, so the objective was here. We were asked to reach the final, we did that, but it was Flamengo who won it in the end and we had to settle for a runners-up prize. That is that is so gutting to lose it on penalties. I really wanted to see us win it. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but even so, that was the objective to reached the final and we managed to do that as well so yeah I I've got to say really really fun career mode this one as well I mentioned before that if you haven't tried managing outside of Europe guys give it a go it's really really fun it's definitely worth doing it's a really fun 
different, unique type of career mode. Because if you're like me, you're probably only always managing Europe and primarily in the top five, the big five European leagues. But if you want something completely different, especially in the build-up to FIFA 23, a summertime fun type of series, give it a go. It's really, really fun. Of course, the Cobbledon to is being split over two in-game seasons is a little bit frustrating, don't get me wrong, but it's a really, really fun league to manage in, the Argentine Primera Liga, and of course, you've got the Copa Libertadores licensed as well. It's really, really fun, and I think Boca Juniors would be a class team to start off with as well. It is a shame that, once again, they don't have the... Um, the, um, the La Bombonera in the game. I swear it was recently, but it's an iconic stadium. But even so, the kits are absolutely brilliant, by the way. I love the kits. Aesthetically, they're beautiful. Really, really cool. You've got a strong rivalry with River Plate, as strong as it gets in Buenos Aires. And again, fantastic team to do a few of Korean They need a rebuild. It's an aging team, but it's a brilliant team to manage in South America. Guys, definitely give them a go. I had so much fun rebuilding this Boca Junior side. But that will instead episode of the design for guys big thank you for watching hope you enjoyed if you haven't to drop a like most of you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon